10 seconds. Oh, no, there we go. Doing well, doing well. Ready to get some awesome Rocket League action going here in, with these uh, high school teams, man. Interesting. You saw Airspeed kind of sit back there, take a very, very small, not super aggressive push from, I believe that might have been uh, Bob who was up on there, and then just take that all the way in, honestly. Maybe just uh, we just saw a uh, Ludlow team that wasn't super set up yet. Uh, well, I mean, <clears throat> if you see these teams come in like Ludlow has come in so far, now, again, they are, uh, yeah, they are down 0-1, but so far they're 1-0 in this series. Like you said, it's only the third week or so, so we'll really see. I mean, the, the way they have improved so far in this series here with EGF is, uh, is very, very important. It's uh, something you can talk about all day long. Here, action is starting. Oh. Yeah, airspeed again all over that one. It seems that he's really been able to take advantage of this ball when it's up close and personal, uh, up all in the, the, the Falcons grill, you know, right there. That second time he's taken it up there, put it up, found very little opposition and taken to the house for a score. What? Navic. <laughs> Navic, you're muted. Not to be outdone, Baba here coming in and uh, after Aerospeed saw two different scores and within what, a minute and 10 seconds? Uh, again, you have his teammate Baba come through there and put one up in what, six seconds? Uh, this is not a characteristically set up and organized Ludlow Falcons team. We are having some microphone issues uh am i good now i believe i can now be heard on the stream that was rather unfortunate i do apologize there uh we will run some stuff back oh that's what while. he was saying i'm sorry i didn't i didn't yes. fully understand yes, i just my uh my microphone was not being picked up for a little while there but we are back into this is baba baggins here pushes it into the corner i mean i'd like to re-go over everything i just said but that doesn't really matter as we are gonna oh! have a fourth go coming out i mean they are on point at the moment they are on point, they are awake, they are alert, and they are alive. I, I love what they did there. That was airspeed, and that was traveled down bottom, kind of uh, forcing this Ludlow Falcons team to play one or the other. They make no decision, and airspeed gets up there and knocks in his third. Not in a row, though, because Baba did get one. The third one now, 4 0 two, three minutes to go. Yeah, I mean, being up four goals has got to be absolutely fantastic if you're the Centaurs at the moment, right? You are... You're a game down. Everybody else is pretty much a game up on you. You're the only one out of the teams to have not yeah. uh, managed to find something coming out of it. So if they can, if they can take an early lead here and manage to connect themselves, uh, manage to catch themselves up, that's going to be really, really good for them in the mm. weekly bracket. Um, but yeah, I mean, now that I have more of these technical issues, let's let's properly get into these games. I mean, this first. Game oh yeah, I guess we. Huh? I guess we probably should say again. There's the Woodstar Woodstock Centaurs in the blue, and the Ludlow Falcons in the red. I think you might have said that while we I were. I do. Uh, yes, I did say that, uh, and uh, obviously I wasn't being heard at the time, so nobody else heard that. So coming in now, a bit of demolition coming out. Airspeed looking to try and get a nice rebound, trying to make a play off bike himself. There, not going to be able to though. But I feel like he's, you know, I feel like if you're the Centaurs at the moment, you're in a pretty good spot, right? You're kind of, you're kind of enjoying your four goal leads. 
I mean, honestly, you could get way less aggressive with this as this ball does bounce again in front of the Ludlow Falcons' goal. Just spending a whole lot of time right here. But, I mean, uh, again, Woodstock, I mean, they're playing the game, right? This is the best of five. This is not the first one. This is not going to be the deciding factor by any means. But with the amount of time ball spent over there on the red side and the Centaur is up 4-0, like you kind of said, they could uh, they could afford to play this very passively. Yeah, they, they could they just know. literally run the timer down at the moment, play it super, super calm, play it defensively. And, I mean, even if they make a couple of mistakes, they'd have to make four major mistakes and let the Falcons get the ball past them multiple times. So, I mean, if they just chill out, kind of, you know, it's it's not the most exciting yeah. thing to commentate, but it's definitely a strategy that they, they, they could take. No, it does make sense. And they're just playing bounce ball right now, right? Uh, yeah. You're saying it, 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 uh, almost periodically, almost like switching out here, you're seeing Woodstock players come through there, use up boost, and just go straight for this ball while the other two are defending. Sending that ball flying, and like you just said, like Navik said here, wasting those precious few seconds. You do that many times in a row, and again, looking at a very defensive-minded game at a 4-0 stomp so far. Yeah, I mean, a minute left onto the clock now, right? We'll see, like, that's 60 seconds to try and score, what, five goals? Or, or four, right? If, if we say it's four, yeah. it's only 15 seconds a goal. Like, that's some very quick goals, and it might actually be a lot shorter. Oh, oh. A fifth goal is made by airspeed there so it's not looking good for the falcons in this game one i think what they need to do now is kind of sit back mentally reset and move on from there kind of take that time i understand what you're saying navik so what well, uh what we saw there janify and the ludlow falcons losing another one i think that was just the uh the result of being aggressive but again that's what they have to be honestly i mean what's the difference between being four four zeroed and five zeroed right yeah 100 percent and uh it doesn't exactly it doesn't it really really doesn't matter the difference between like four zero or five zero what matters is you mentally reset <laughs> you maybe talk about what went wrong with that game and you start preparing for the next round traveled there just getting punished for even touching the ball we're seeing players on the side of the Ludlow Falcons getting even more aggressive and not just on the ball here yeah I'm mean... still spending Ooh. still spending all the time in the world with this on the right side man look at this yeah like 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 I said all they need to do is play it defensively and run down the timer and that's exactly what they've done it is what well, almost mathematically uh, now it's mathematically impossible yeah. for them to be able to find the goals they need to win this like catch up and bring it into a tiebreaker and we're not even going to get any airtime. It's just going to go straight into that match one and move us into game two very, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, I, again, I mean, the first three by Airspeed, Airspeed, and then Baba were the beginning of this, obviously. That was where we were heading towards to set up such a stomp. But with this ending 5-0, you talked a little bit about having to sit back and reset that is really, really what we're going to want to see the Falcons doing here uh, right now. You know, while we're talking here, while we're preparing for this next match, uh, counters on 30 seconds or so, that's what they need to do. They need to identify what went wrong here, what they were doing right, which is some, but what they were doing wrong, which might have been a little bit more. Yeah, 100% agree with you on that one. As we do move into game two now with the Woodstock, uh, the Woodstock Centaurs taking that first game in this best of five series. I mean... I, I could again like you said it's it's uh it's best of five right so they could they could run it back quite easily take another game out and then just catch up yeah uh, I mean I could see it, okay if this second match Navek ends the same way as the first one then I am not sure if the you know the perseverance will be there to necessarily take a third one you talked about shocking individual game at that point it might just be worth it to take your lumps continue playing see what you did right and you did wrong in the coming week. Of course, Rocket League being every Wednesday on the uh, for these EGF casts, and uh, same time, 4.15 EST, and try and come back next week with a little bit of a different head on your shoulders. Yeah, 100%. And, I mean, again, it could have just been a bit of miscommunication, you know, some, some, some warm-up, some decision-making. Mm -hmm. But as we get into Game 2 now, the teams are joining up. We should be able to see some good Rocket League. Hopefully... So not... it's oh, sorry, go on. I was gonna say predictions. Do we are we gonna see another uh, another scoreless stomp against the Falcons? No. I see. There you go. I, exactly. <laughs> you ask a question, you get an answer. That's what I love, Casper. The magic. <laughs> there you go. Bop, bopping the ball straight into the goal. There as they managed to get the first goal for the Falcons on this second game. They're immediately taking the lead. They're going. Look, you might have five o does, but we are coming back with a bit of adventure. And both oh. teams. That was okay. That's not something you see very frequently, is it, Navik? I, both I uh, think that might both be teams sending a player, yeah. I think that might be the first time we've ever seen it in EGF. 
Well, here, I'm glad I was here for it. How interesting. There you go. You know, just the, uh, the three different ball. mindsets and everybody wanted to do the same thing, kind of. Yeah, 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 definitely. As Seb here starts to take the ball. Oh, no. Okay, misses it. Passes it to Bob. Bob managing to run it down to airspeed. Cancel again. Bob playing it so carefully. He was so patient there. Nobody to follow it up in the right angle, but that was really, really well played. A lot of battle force at the moment is the Falcons are applying so much pressure to the Centaurs. Wow, yeah, a, a completely different team here, son. And uh, honestly, the Ludlow Falcons almost lost a goal there because they were doubling up on defense when they might should have been interrupting with players or just simply playing the goal. Playing two players out uh, can be can be very risky. Yeah, I mean, like you're saying, uh, it's it's a completely different team that we're seeing out of the Falcons at the moment. They went from a passive team that was kind of just getting bullied in that first game to completely turning it around and being the aggressors and making the centaurs know that they can't they can't push them around for much longer absolutely not and that's what i love about this the, com the competitiveness being kept up throughout by every team so far who's who's uh, participated here with egf lots of aerial attempts there um i i mean our, we saw it last game right woodstock is not in the same position to be able to do that but they have definitely showed priority they've definitely shown uh, a, a real prominence with these aerial balls. Oh my goodness, airspeed outrunning that one in flying fashy form. I mean, I feel like we see it every time we see airspeed on screen, but I mean, the sake of his name here, he definitely lives up to the moniker. Yes, yes. He really does. And, and that was just simply uh, maybe having more boost than his opponents, but uh, knowing when to do that is huge in Rocket League. Yeah, no, 100% boost management is one of the most all time. I'd, I'd argue it's possibly one of the fundamentals that you should learn pretty much immediately of getting into the game, right? If you're wasting it constantly, you're, uh, you're never going to learn how to get some, some much more technically minded uh, approaches, especially in those aerials using that boost. As we just see yeah. a bit, a bit of, a bit of just garbage time at the moment. A lot of bouncing back and forth in the corner. Nobody, everybody's trying to try and get it out, but then they're just bouncing it back in. As airspeed does push it out, Seb managing to intercept it. They're passing it to Janify. Janify trying to rebound it off that corner back to Seb, but maybe, maybe not quite the communication they were expecting here. As Bob gets a lovely little chip, actually, that went over one of them, getting it past most of the defenders, rebounding it into center. Will you see Seb going to make the shot? He gets it a little bit too high. That was unfortunate, but a lovely setup from Bob. Yeah, great job by the Falcons keeping it all the way over here and identifying a little bit earlier when they just need to take it back and play defensively and then push it back up. This is Seb here with a fantastic aerial interception. Again, spending all the time in the world down here. Yeah, I mean, again, these corners, this just seems to be the time waste of this game, right? They seem to get it in a corner and back it around for a good, like, 30, 40 seconds, and then there you go, straight back. It's... It's interesting. One to one at the moment. Oh, a lovely shot by Janify there. Not going to be able to find the connection though. It's Bamba Baggins. Let's try and do something. It's Bob managing to get it past him there. But again, a rebounding back and forth. Okay, Seb was set up nicely there. It's a potential aerial here. It comes out. Seb tries to hit it. Passes it to Janify. Janify is not going to be able to find the angle that he was looking for though. As the second demolition of this series comes out with Janify on a travel chain. There you go. Another pressure getting flipped around here. I do like it. Uh, starting this off with a demolition, of course, the, that's a three-second respawn timer. Um, it, it, it's such a crucial way to start this out. Obviously, you know, Rocket League is susceptible to numbers just like everyone else. You play in a 3v2, you're going to be at an advantage. Yeah, and three seconds may not seem like a lot, but that can be the life or death situation when it comes yep. to something like a pass or a setup. So it definitely... It definitely is a lot more major than people seem to realize as a Janify here tries to get that wonderful setup I was just talking about. Bob going a straight shot for the goal there. And you actually saw Seb behind the goalkeeper of the Centaurs push him out trying to uh, alleviate that goal a bit. It's a beautiful juggle here by Janify. He's doing a great job. Uh, and uh, let's see, I think really Janify, Airspeed, and Seb, I, I, I really feel like so far in this game are showing that they are more aerial players and really, again, have that prominence up top when you're flying through the air with the with the boost nicely done there proving my point okay I, I love this every time i every time i say something about this ludlow falcons team and them scoring they just prove me right instantly i love it uh, you know it, you don't you, you gotta love it as casters when the players make you look like you've got 2000 iq and yeah, we right. are now with the falcons up two goals 40 seconds left onto the clock like i said i think oh i thought that was gonna be a third goal i thought they were gonna be two up for a second there and they might actually be oh no okay 
they do manage to clear the ball away from the Falcons there. A bit of communication there as they attempted to clear it and push it back and not going to be able to. But they do get it away from their goal here. Steal the boost. Make sure that their opposition doesn't get ahead of them here. As you were talking about, the Janna fight's aerial like ability and decision making is been, he's really, really showing it off with some flourishing. Yeah, it really, really is. Um, I, I mean, I, I really think that it's seven, seven Bop playing those aerial positions earlier really is what set up their second score now. Great P pushing here and just kind of juggling, trying to waste out time. Greatly done. This, yeah, this ball is going to hit the ground. What I would like to suggest is the difference between the first map that did see, of course, Ludlow taking and the second one going on over the side of the Fal of the. Wait, hang on. Yeah, Falcons and Centaurs are tied up. The, uh, the Falcons took the first game. That's Change of possessions. This second game, there was no fewer than eight. The first game, uh, this was just Falcons continuously, uh, obviously a 5-0 stomp in the first game, just continuously just ramming that in over and over and over again. They did it on the ground, they did it in the air. Now, that might have just been, the, the second match might have been the result of just some warming up, but what we saw here on this one was a completely different story. That was the Falcons coming through here and the, the, the possession changed so much. This ball went back and forth from red side to blue side so often that that opened up a lot of abilities for the Falcons, of course. Them scoring first on you know that very, very initial play very, very quickly. First six seconds, I think, right? I believe so, yeah. It was something like that. It was ex extraordinarily quick. Yeah. Just so it's about the change of possession and possession time. There was just simply more opportunity for the Falcons on the second game, and they won it. The first one, Woodstock was all over it, slammed in a 5-0 uh, score on the first game, and now with less time of possession, they were able to do less with it. Yeah, and we saw, like you said, we saw the Falcons taking that game. So really now it's it's anybody's situation, right? We're, we're effectively just playing a best of three. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And, and we're not going to see the, the uh, conclusion here, of course, as a best of five, this only being the second with this te these teams tied up, we will be seeing at least two more. And I, and I kind of like that. I mean, uh, I don't know. Three O's Tom's are only so entertaining, right? I know, 100%. Being able to see both teams playing and being able to see them take the lead, take a victory is always really, really good. From it, It's good to see the strengths and weaknesses, especially from like an analyst standpoint, right? But when these teams, as they have coaches and things, look back over the boards and look over what the players were doing or how they were made, you can see what worked and what didn't work. And I think that's really, really important for improving in such a competitive environment. And this is Aerospeed, the aerial guy for their side. Again, just, I mean, showing dominance on that, right? Uh, with the ball spending this much time in the air, Oh my goodness. You know, I keep expecting a big explosion, but whenever Seb scores, it is just a tiny puff of smoke. Yeah. <laughs> I do love that. It's, it's the, just... the, the, the... <laughs> oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, that, that was it. It's just, just a little puff of smoke, and you're like, oh, yeah. well, that was a little anticlimactic, if I'm honest. Yeah. Like, you expect something super intense, the dragons flying out, the, the, the calling of an eagle or something like that, and it's just a little, uh, this little puff, like a... Like a, like a much smaller firework that you thought was going to be huge and loud and uh, explosive, but ends up not being. No, oh, yeah, that's, that's actually the best. Yeah, that's probably the best analogy you could have come up with. And oh! Uh, Baggins might just be able to get that in. He does! There's that big explosion we were talking about. Yeah, right? Look like you have some like graviton surge going across this, the, the front of this. But seriously, what a what a way to strike back on that one. Um, I, I like Seb not giving up there at the end, still trying to get in there. But I, I, there's nothing you can do against a bad shot like that, right? Like, an absolute pool shot, 100% just uh, 180 degrees, uh, you know, straight line, right for the uh, right for the goal on that one. Yeah, no, 100% is we see Janify trying to. I mean, they managed to really, really well that drib dribble the ball around. Get it past the defenders, but just couldn't commit to the payload in that case. And as you see Seb trying to get a hit, they're trying to clear it off. Baba Bang is actually knocking it towards his own goal as Janifei capitalizes on that and manages to find the second goal for the Falcons. Both of these teams now playing so aggressively and just trying to abuse each other's mistakes. Yes, as if you're reading my mind, Navic, what I wanted to pose at the difference in this game, that very, very quick. It almost looks like Red, that's Lodal Falcons, kind of maybe change up their strategy a little bit because they're taking these one-on-ones and being and kind of exploiting the Woodstock Centaurs in their ability to dribble. We just saw Janify come through there and a couple different times, and on the last goal, too, have this ball up close and, and just play with it back and forth while you see blue members, blue cars just flying away from it. Ooh, and there's 2 2. Baba Baggins managing to sneak it in under the defense of the Falcons. 
proving me wrong. Wait, we said it. <laughs> that, that's Love Thou Falcons proving me right earlier, and the Woodstock Centaurs proving me wrong immediately. That was <laughs> Babbitt with a fantastic shot on that one. That's his second. Just seriously, just like, just beaming him right in there. Getting no opportunity for defense to even touch. No, I mean, it was a bit of a fadeaway as S speed went high and Babbo went, um, Babbo went low, so... It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to go keep like that when you're only one person. Yeah. Almost in there! Janify with the rebound! Nicely done! Goal after goal, this game is absolutely explosive. Yeah, so, so far we have five, total score of five, with three minutes left. The first game we did see a 0-5, that was, <laughs> I think, fair to say, a little bit more one-sided. Yeah. This uh, is anything but one-sided, and with three minutes left, uh, we double this, or more than double this, we're looking at a total score of 10. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a possibility. I'm, I'm thinking we're going to end up with eight goals. That's going to be my, my prediction. You th uh, okay, so you think it's going to slow down here in a bit? Yeah, I think I think both teams have played super aggressively now, and they're going to start to reevaluate some things and try and play a bit more defensively. But as I say that, Seb immediately proves me wrong, getting that goal very, very quickly. We might be on a 10-goal game, to be honest, but I'm going to stick with eight. Uh, now I hear you. Okay, there's a prediction eight. We still have two more to hit that one and four more to hit ten. Uh, Seb? Yeah, again, I really just have to put that up to the to the great performances on one on ones, right? And ball control. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, they're, they're both teams are playing this really well. And going back to game one, where the Centaurs just completely stomped on the Falcons with that 5 0. Like, that, this, I, again, it's like it's a completely different team is playing. I hear you. And, and now there's going back over the way, and this is the Ludlow Falcons playing aggressive. Like, of course, the. Uh, the, the bad part about playing defensively at any given time, Navic, yeah. is that you can't score, right? No, that's you're, true. you're getting all the opportunity to the other team to score. Well, yeah, but you're also playing defensively to try and restrict them from scoring, so... About time, yeah, you need up time. I yeah, you're, you're trying to eat up time more than anything. And you, you definitely want to be doing that whilst you're in the lead. If you play over-aggressive, I mean... Yeah, it, if you play over aggressive when you've got the lead, sometimes you're just going to completely throw it out. As, oh, they're trying it. There's some lovely teamwork oh. coming out here. The amount of co cooperation coming out from the Falcons is unbelievable. They're playing this so well, even in the air, passing it back and forth. Yeah, I think this ball could apply for frequent flyer miles soon because it has spent almost the past 30 seconds exclusively in the air. We just saw Seb and Bob being forced to make aerial corrections on that one. Both of them, unfortunately, hitting just right above, literally where that ball just landed on blue is where that ball went a second ago, two times in a row, once by Bob, once by Seb. But now with that, we see the Ludlow Falcons getting another one. You know, we'll play the rebound again. Yeah, bringing us up to that seventh goal. I mean, a minute 30 left on the clock. I'm feeling kind of, I'm feeling good about my uh, my prediction. I'm going to be honest with you, Tug. Yeah, that makes sense. We're only looking at one more, and uh, all the Falcons have to do with three up is play defensively. Yeah. 100%. Of course they're not. I mean, again, they're good at offense. There's no reason to, it's, it, that's not their only option, but it is a good option. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, like, like I could, you know, you always if you if you're applying so much pressure and the, the, your opponent is failing to get their defense sorted, then just keep applying pressure, right? You just keep applying it until yeah. they break. In in that sense, they're they're doing what they're doing well at the moment, and the centaurs are trying to figure out a way to stop it or at least divert some of the aggression to more mid center field instead of at their goal. But uh, so far, it's definitely working for them. That was the sound of the minute buzzer left onto the clock here. So, it's left on its own. This is going to be, yeah, the Falcons taking this the second one. I'm, I'm kind of confused here, Navic, because I feel like they are being very selective about what balls they play whenever it's offensively. Now, that could just be a different form of defensive play, I guess, and just letting the ball hang out on blue side. But uh, I, I, I don't know. I Like, yeah, I have ball control. I said this earlier, man. Yeah, ball, ball control is definitely king. Even, even when you're playing defensively when you've got the lead, you're still after that constant ball control. So, it's it's definitely, yeah, I mean, like you're saying, the Centaurs definitely aren't getting the ball control that they're looking for. I'm going to say this has probably felt like, it very much felt like an 80-20 split in ball control. And that's, that's mm -hmm. not what you want to be seeing. I would love if Rocket League had stats like that. Like, uh, obviously we have our shots, our defended blocks, you know, our... <clears throat> overall score and things like this, but time of possession would be really cool, you know, just... You know, That's oh! the eighth goal on the last second! <laughs> no, I don't believe it. I just... <laughs> oh, Navic, I love it. You got your big brain caster over here calling them Galaxy. like... They... 
and uh, Galaxy Brain, yes sir. And with the Pup as well, you mentioned that. So that was Seb, of course, with the last one of the Navix favorite goal animation. Uh, how beautiful, how beautiful. There's the Love Falcons taking the third game here, now two to one. Yeah, I mean, they went from being a game down to now being a game up. Yes, sir. So really, they're uh, they're playing it well. They are, they are. What, what I would like to point out on this one, <clears throat> Seb and Bop spend a lot of time in the air, like I mentioned, right? And yeah. maybe it's just a lack of, like, they didn't have the boost, but I'm mad that you got your prediction right. <laughs> and Seb <laughs> and Bop would have gotten to 10 in that last one, like, literally, like, I think 8, 10 seconds between them. Or not, no, sorry, not even that. This, this was uh, Seb hit Bop's rebound. And both of them hit the ball very, very fast, right towards goal. And, and you're talking about a couple of meters on the top part of the goal. You know, I mean, if this was rounded, it would have bounced in, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, if they had just had a, a tiny bit more prominence there, that would have been an even bigger stomp from the 6-2 to two slaughter we just saw. Yeah, I mean, you know, coming into here, game three, now the Centaurs have got their back to the wall a little bit, right? They can't, they need to be able to win this round to bring it to game five and then proceed to try and get this tiebreaker to get the leader. If not, they're going to be 0-2 in the season on week three. Yeah, and obviously not a uh, not a situation that any team wants to be in, and especially given uh, that there's only one wins to week matches, it's going to be, it's going to take you, obviously, a full two other weeks to get that tied up if that's in your future. Bob with a very long range shot. Oh, and the chip coming in there by Seb, managing to get that goal, and that goal is going to keep making me giggle every time I see it. <laughs> I do love it. That is Seb's, what, uh, he got two or three in the last one. I believe, Obviously. That is, I believe this is, that was his, like, fifth goal of the series. Yeah. Fifth or sixth, because obviously Lodlaw Falcons not score in the first game, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, fifth or sixth at least. Seb showing that aerial prowess that I've been mentioning just so much on cast. Oh, almost banging up for the second goal there. They do manage to save it just narrowly there as Seb spent that time whilst his two teammates were playing aggressively, re-getting himself back to that back of the map, getting some boost and trying to loop that really long shot. He managed to carry the ball all the way to their goal as well. So that, that was really well thought out. And you can see a huge amount of communication by what I am under the impression of is a completely new Falcons team. I don't remember yeah. any of these names last season. Airspeed traveled and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, and last season, obviously, a little, little while ago. We're old Bama, men now. Bama Baggins and Airspeed <laughs> were definitely a part of the Centaurs last season. Travel Chain is new, but on the side of the Falcons, I believe all three players are new. Oh, sorry. I thought you, that, that's the team that I thought you were yes. talking about. Oh. Uh, oh, Bop and, and, and Bop also oh, has his, uh, the same one. <laughs> you know, maybe he heard and they're just giving the casters what they want. That's the uh, that's the galaxy that I would like to live in, Navik. <laughs> you know what? I'm quite content with that as we see another uh, puff of smoke coming out as the Falcons score their second goal a minute and a half into the round. Three minutes left on the clock at the moment. Or three minutes and a half left onto the clock at the moment. We need to see yeah. the Centaurs managing to find something here, right? I think everybody wants to see a game five. Yeah, all, all the time, in all ways, in all shapes and forms, Navic, do I want to see a Game 5, seriously. Yeah. This is uh, this has been, so far, a Ludlow Falcons team that has uh, done a decent job on defense, but the sheer fact of the matter, Navic, is they haven't had to spend very much time back there, straight no, up. I mean, look at this positioning coming out. Bob was on the wall waiting for uh, uh, Janifi to score the goal, but there's going to be airspeed managing to... Uh to score the goal there. Sorry, I completely had a bit of a, a brain stuck moment there as SB manages to find the goal. They managed to get the best all three of the yeah. Falcons, bringing the Centaurs to their first goal of the set. Or of the game, sorry. My friend, I mentioned it. Airspeed, Seb, Bop. Those are your pilots, we can call them, because they spend so much time in the air. Yeah, superiority is the name of the game in Rocket League. Yep. I really just need some anti-aircraft guns from Traveled and Babo. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Nice destroy coming through here as ball comes up on oh. to the Falcons. Or Look Centaur, at the patience me. coming out from the Falcons there. Like, he just sat there, waited, and tapped in when, like, the, the level of prediction and just... I mean, yeah, the Falcons are playing this absolutely phenomenally as the Centaurs seem to be trailing behind, and it's, it's weird because there's this weird juxtaposition from <laughs> that first game as Seb literally just walks the ball into their goal. I, I love the come up there on the very last second. Oh, you know what that was? That was Baba to his left. He just barely missed that. I, I think, again, that was a Woodstock Centaur player 
who is trying to go for a bounce ball play there and just send him flying as opposed to opening up the lane for this Falcons player to go on in there. And again, Seb hit it like, you know, maybe half uh, half field, midfield, and then yeah. didn't even have to touch it again, just play defense on it. Yeah, I mean, I think what we're seeing at the moment is a Falcons team that after their first game is just warmed up and is showing their technical powers of not only like aerial control, but just general rocket need. They're mechanically playing very, very well. Yep. If the uh, if the first game that we called was mostly talked about with the aerial superiority, the second one was mostly about 1v1s, now we're seeing a Ludlow Falcons team that have taken the prominence in both of those, and it has shown thoroughly. Yeah, I mean, a bit of mis miscommunication there as uh, Nifi and Duke both try a bot, both try and go for the ball. But I don't think it really matters. Again, they're just trying to play this time. They're just trying to weight it down, slow it down. This might be a goal coming out from Espy. There is it's slightly too high. Unfortunately, there wasn't any follow-up to continue with that. But he does manage to get that mid-center reset, passing it to Baba Baggins. Baba Baggins isn't going to be able to find the connection either, though. Well, let, let me ask you. At this point, up 3-1, one, one minute left, and 2-1 in the series, as a Ludlow Falcons team, do you just send two offenders at any given time to keep your defender back all the time? You, you don't want to give up any goals here. No, you definitely don't want to give up any goals. You want to be trying to just play it as defensively as you can. Or at least that's what you'd think, as all three of the Falcons are pushed up the field at the moment, yeah. or at least into the midfield. Bob managing to get into the corner here. He looks like he's trying to set it up for center field, passing it off at the top there. You see Jadifi trying to go for it there. Slightly too much momentum. It's airspeed. Tries to capitalize on that mistake, oh. and he is going to be able to, managing to find that second goal. Are we going to see the game five, Navic? That I, is the I'm, next I'm step to seeing it. it. I'm, I'm not going to yeah. push my luck. I've already predicted one game first. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Want to keep it with a winning record here as yes, Navek is we're looking at the yeah Ludlow Falcons looking to seal this one up, push this ending to a game four. The opposing side, the Woodstock Centaurs, looking for their first overall match W and looking to send this to a game five tied up. They're down one two. Yeah, they're definitely trying to tie it up at the moment. And with 30 seconds left on the clock, the pressure is definitely on them. Each second that goes by, the heat gets turned up just a little bit more. This is only a difference of one, so we're looking at a team that can score at 0 0 0. We did already see it in that 6 to 2 stomp. Obviously, it didn't matter too, too much, but they still got it, and it's still possible, my friend. Yeah, I mean, like we say every single time, the game's not over till the ball touches the ground. So we might see it to get to one second here, but if they can find boost and get it up into the air, but it's immediately denied oh. as the Falcons take the series. Great job there at the end, realizing exactly what you needed to do, keeping that ball on the ground so it did not get that aerial pause. No overtime either in this match, no overtime in the form of a game five, no overtime in the form of tied scores. Falcons taking this one. I do believe they are now up 2-0 in this, uh, in the, uh, so far this uh, week three now. Uh, yes, I do believe you're correct on that one. Yep. So Centa Woodstock Centaur is failing to... Uh, Failing to take a W again. As it is only second game in a row, but still. Yeah, it's it's definitely news. it's definitely not the greatest feeling in the world. But sometimes you just have off games, you know what I mean? You just have an off couple of weeks. They could run it back the next five weeks and win every single game back to back. But we will have to wait and see. So make sure to tune in next Wednesday to see how the rest of this season's plot thickens as i as always would like to thank you all for tuning into week three of egfh full 2019 with of course the ludlow falcons taking the victory you can tune in tomorrow at 4 15 uh, p.m est for overwatch you can also as always follow us at official egf on twitter and twitch for updates and announcements and once again tug I'd like to thank our wonderful sponsors, the Yukon School of Engineering and the Yukon Gaming Club for helping make this season possible. My name has been Kevin Navicasts Dignan. You can find me on Twitter at Navicasts. Yes, sir. I'm FBI Tugboat. You can find me over there on Twitter, FBI underscore Tugboat. And I will be casting play-by-play -play for Overwatch tomorrow. As Navic said, 4.15 p.m., same stream. We will see you guys there.